A loan from the United States government to the Eastman Kodak Company, the famous company that led the photography industry for decades, to start manufacturing pharmaceutical ingredients to fight COVID-19. This news alone was enough to cause the iconic American company to skyrocket on the stock exchange. In just two sessions, between 27th and 29th of July 2020, Kodak shares rose by 2,190%. Yep, that's what I said, 2,190%. Kodak's share price increased 23-fold in just two days on the stock market. The price went from $2.62 at the close of trading on 27th of July to $60 on the 29th. Of course, as you can see in this graph, after reaching the $60 level, the action quickly corrected to the $8 level, which was current at the time of preparing this video. Even so, that means multiplying the average price of the last few months by almost four. And that kind of movement made us wonder, what exactly has happened so that the shares of this company went from $2 to $60 and finally $8 in just a few days? And from there, spring more questions. And it's because of this, the price of Kodak shares has increased fourfold. But despite this, the current market value of this company is at about $600 million. A far cry from the more than $20 billion that Kodak reached in 1994. At that time, the American photography giant represented 0.5% of the entire value of the S&P 500, which in today's terms would be equivalent to about $150 billion. So what's happened to make Kodak collapse? How did a company that led the global photography market for more than 100 years lose more than 98% of its value and go bankrupt in 2012? Did you know that since then this company has tried its luck with cryptocurrencies or that it even built its own nuclear reactor in secret? Well, it's not secret anymore. In this new video of the series that we're making in conjunction with Value School, we are going to tell you all the details about the fall of Kodak over the last few decades and its surprising takeoff in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. By the way, here's the link to Value School's website if you want to know more about this project. Make it easy. George Eastman was kind of the Steve Jobs of his time. And no, I'm really not exaggerating. In 1874, at the age of 24, good old George bought his first camera, which at that time was not exactly common. And in fact, what happened is that when he used it for the first time during a vacation, he didn't manage to take a single picture. In those days, cameras were very different from the ones that we know. They were much more difficult to use. It wasn't just a matter of pushing a button. You actually had to use individual glass plates for every single picture. But you know what? This is precisely how the Kodak story began. Begins. Eastman didn't give up and hired a photographer to give him some private lessons. You could say that's when his love affair with the world of photography began. 14 years later, in 1888, Eastman registered the Kodak trademark and obtained a patent for a new camera that used film instead of glass plates. The era of film had begun, which was obviously much easier and faster to take pictures with. And in fact, the same technology could be applied to movies. In fact, from that moment on, Kodak began to market its cameras using a slogan that reflected very well what would become the brand's philosophy. You press the button, we do the rest. But that wasn't the only indicator, the only distinguishing feature of the company. Kodak's other major innovation also had a lot to do with trade policy, but it was something very different. You see, when selling their cameras, Kodak soon applied a bait and switch strategy equivalent to that of the razor companies. That is, selling the camera at the lowest possible price and making money from the sale of reels, rolls of film, photographic paper, and other supplies. In this way, they made the cameras accessible to the general public whilst feeding a market with constant income. And that's not all. After all, this was a kind of business that was not so easy to get into. Making the film rolls was quite complex. It required a deep knowledge of chemistry, especially when color photos became popular from the 1960s onwards. And so it was that by the mid 1970s, Kodak had become by far the largest photo company in the world. To give you an idea, in the United States, it controlled 90% of the market for roll film, 85% of the market for cameras, and was also a very important player in the medical imaging sector. And not only that, in the 1980s, Kodak began to make a lot of corporate purchases to expand its business lines. For example, it took over IBM's medical diagnostics business and also acquired Mass Memory, a company that manufactured the popular floppy disks. 
In 1988, it even launched a $5.1 billion cash takeover bid. That's just over $11 billion in today's money on the pharmaceutical company Sterling Drug. The idea was to take advantage of the photo company's chemical know-how to break into the promising world of pharmacy. <laughs> For Kodak's shareholders, the merger will accelerate our entry into the more than $110 billion global pharmaceutical industry. It will provide us with attractive long-term sales and profit potential. Colby H. Chandler, President and CEO of Kodak in 1988. Of course, a few years later, they had to sell this business for far less than they had acquired it for. The fact is that in the early 1990s, this company, Kodak, was a global colossus, employing more than 120,000 people. However, that was to be their last decade of success. The fall of a colossus. How is it possible that one of the largest multinationals in the United States, a giant that had dominated the world market for more than 100 years, went from achieving its all-time sales record in 2001 to going bankrupt just 10 years later and practically disappearing? Okay, so many of you may be thinking, Josh, this is an easy question. We all know the answer. Technological change and the advent of digital cameras. Well, yes, and in a way, no. I'll explain. One of the biggest risks that an investor faces is a technological disruption and a paradigm shift will soon overtake the business model of the company in which they have invested their money. And it's true that, in a way, that's exactly what happened with Kodak. But looked at from a different angle, it's not that simple. What would you say if I told you that the first digital camera was born in their laboratories as early as 1975? That Kodak itself began marketing these cameras in the 1990s, including the first professional digital camera in 1991. That by 1993, this company had already invested more than $5 billion in research on digital technology. Or that in 97, you could find headlines like this. January 13th, 1997. How an outsider's vision saved Kodak. The remarkable turnaround that he has produced at Eastman Kodak, George Fisher shows why the board chose him, an outsider, in late 1993 to run this company. Forbes. Friends, this is a much more interesting case than it might seem at first glance, because Kodak's fall was not so much related to technological change as it was to the company's management of its adaptation process and poor business strategy. And you know what? In hindsight, everything that happened up until the fall of this giant makes a lot of sense. But to understand this story, we have to go back to 1993. That year, Kodak chose George Fisher, the first outsider in the company's 117 year history to lead this multinational. He was chosen to carry out an internal revolution. Although we may find the time frame surprising, way back in 1993, Fisher, who came from Motorola, was chosen to focus on one thing, the business of digital photography. You see, faced with the prospect that new digital technologies could wipe out Kodak's business model, the company devoted enormous resources to diversifying its activity for years. As we have already mentioned, they bought up pharmaceutical companies, clinical diagnosis companies, and battery manufacturers. <laughs> They even developed their very own nuclear reactor to carry out their research. Yeah, yeah, a private nuclear reactor. Check it out. Kodak reveals it had secret nuclear reactor for 30 years, independent. The fact is that all this was something that Fisher considered a serious, very serious mistake because it basically meant neglecting their main business. When I arrived, we were not investing in the core business. Think of the signal we sent to the core business teams when most of the strategies and decisions have been diverting resources to other areas, such as healthcare or consumer goods. George Fisher. So, no sooner said than done, in his first year at the helm of the company, Fisher and his new team sold virtually every non-photo business. He used the resources he raised to do two things, reduce the group's debt to almost zero and invest heavily in the core business of photography. I think there was a fear of the digital while I was coming here. Because I believe that the digital image and the core business of photography have a symbiotic relationship, which is, in fact, exciting. George Fisher. The idea behind this new equipment is that Kodak would be able to reproduce its ecosystem in a digital environment. In other words, in the long term, although much later than the market thought, the reels would indeed disappear. But Kodak understood that both the storage of the photographs and the printing would more than compensate for this. And not only that, they were also convinced that emerging countries like China would yield a lot, and I mean a lot, of money. And in fact, that's the path they took. They invested hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into the Asian giant to create not only digital camera factories, but also to encourage the opening of nearly 7,000 development shops. However, things, well, they didn't go quite as planned. 
On the one hand, Kodak had to face increasing competition in the field of film and photo printing, which affected the margins of a business that would sooner or later begin to see its sales decline. This meant a reduction in economies of scale and the need to cut production capacity. With all that, this entails layoffs, depreciation of assets, damage to image, reduction of retail outlets, and therefore of opportunities for cross-selling, etc, etc. Then on the other hand, the company had to double down on its investment items in the new digital image industry, a world in which its more than 100 years of experience were practically useless. So between 1993 and 2000, Kodak spent almost $9 billion on R&D. And finally, the most important problem of all, the digital ecosystem simply did not pay. What's worse, the technological changes continued advancing until they reached the world we all know today, a world in which digital cameras have practically disappeared because they're now integrated into devices like mobile phones. Let's just say that the changes came about at a much faster rate than Kodak's management had anticipated. And of course, after divesting itself of practically all of the assets outside the world of photography, Kodak had concentrated all its efforts on this business, and the business model no longer worked. In this way, from 2001, everything started to fall apart, and finally in 2012, the company went bankrupt. As you can see, Kodak's big problem was not so much the arrival of the digital camera, but more that they'd put all of their eggs in one basket, thinking they could dominate technological change. Whilst Kodak's management thought about making money from photo CDs or keeping their film real business going for quite some time, people started to share their photos digitally on networks like Facebook, Photolog, or Tuenti. What would they pay Kodak for? And that's how the success story came to an end. Until now, when it's made the headlines again. The coronavirus. As we told you at the beginning of this video, during the month of August 2020, Kodak has grabbed many headlines thanks to its spectacular rise in market prices in late July. Kodak is now a much smaller company and continues to do basically what it has always done. However, over the last few years, it has tried to regain its shimmer with many different projects, including a bid to launch its own cryptocurrency, Kodak Coin. Something that also had an effect on the stock market, by the way. 9th of January 2018, Kodak announces its own Kodak coin cryptocurrency and its shares soar by 125%. Shataka. Well now, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, Kodak wants to rescue its bet on the pharmaceutical business and it wants to do so thanks to a loan of almost $800 million from the United States government to manufacture pharmaceutical compounds with which to fight COVID-19. And that, that was exactly what produced the spectacular revaluation that the company came to experience in just two days of stock market activity as we outlined at the beginning. However, at the time of preparing this video, the loan is not yet secure and not all the details are yet known. What we do know is that it has been a surprise that it is Kodak a company outside of the drug business that has taken on such a contract. Kodak shares plunge after $765 million US government loan hits hurdle. Federal agency to pause funding deal after recent allegations of wrongdoing. The Financial Times. The question is, will Kodak rise from the ashes? We cannot know. But what we do know for sure is that these sudden market movements have caused winners. Yes. But also, many people have also lost a lot of money. In just a few days, the volatility created many millionaires and destroyed fortunes. It was a wild speculative move in which the market suddenly became very much like a casino. And what do you want me to say? We've prepared this video with value school, so watch out for those jumps that can pulverize your savings. Going from $2 to $60 sounds great, but going from $60 to $8 is very painful. <laughs> So, what do you think about the rise and fall of Kodak? How do you think you could have avoided it? Leave us your thoughts down here, as always, in the comments. And if you find this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Take care, and we'll see you next time.